We are back courtside as the jury is now deliberating the fate of Kathleen Hilton. Gives us a chance to give you a preview of the next live trial we're going to be showing you. Jury selection winding down today in the case of a 23-year-old Florida defendant facing the death penalty for allegedly stabbing to death an openly gay man. The state says that Joseph Bearden's motive for the murder of Ryan Skipper was robbery and the use of drugs will be a significant aspect of the trial. Defense attorneys maintain that Bearden played no role in that killing. Joining us now for more on that story, in session correspondent Gene Casares is joining us outside that Bartow, Florida courthouse. Gene, good to see you as always. So let, let, let's focus first on the, the charges if we can. What is it that the prosecution here is saying happened? Well, this is a death penalty case. First of all, two charges, first degree murder, robbery with a deadly weapon. And what the prosecution is saying happened is that Joseph Bearden, the defendant in this case, along with a co-defendant, William uh, Brown, that is not being prosecuted in this case, that they wanted to rob somebody. They wanted money. They wanted money for their drugs. And so they found someone, Ryan Skipper is his name, that's the victim in this case, and they are saying that the defendant actually found him, the motive was to rob him, but in the process, he was stabbed to death. He was stabbed up to 20 times. His body was left along the side of the road, but once again, the motive, prosecutors are saying, they wanted the car of the victim. It was a brand new, 2007 Chevrolet and throughout the night that night in 2007 they tried to sell that car they tried to sell that 15 20 thousand dollar car for 1800 dollars they wanted anything they could get from it prosecutors are saying that was the motive in this case and the and the defendant in this case should be sentenced to death Gene, you're talking about the motive in the case, and I just want to play for a quick moment here a comment that was made earlier by Sheriff Grady Judd um, talking about what they say is, is the suspect, in this case the defendant in this case, bragging about this killing that took place. Let's watch and listen to this for a moment. We'll just kill this guy and take his car and his computer. A witness came in and talked about how William was bragging to him and to others about I killed this guy because he was homosexual, and I took his car. So, Gene, mentioning there the other defendant, as you said, William Brown, is not being tried in this case. His case is still pending. Um, but there was a, a, at least a flurry of activity early on that suggested that the motive for this killing may well have been a hate crime because of the fact that the victim was indeed homosexual. Has that played out? Is that now something that will be argued in this trial, or apparently not? I think in the minds of many, in the family of the victim of this case, Ryan Skipper, and many others in this community, they do believe that this was a hate crime, that Ryan Skipper was killed because of his sexual orientation. But as the case developed and as the prosecutor's office investigated, they found that they did not believe that was the motive, that the motive was purely robbery for money to support that drug habit. So it will not be a part of the prosecution's case in chief. And Gene, again, going back to the other defendant, William Brown, what is the status of his case right now? Well, he also is facing the death penalty. His case will be later on this year. This is the defendant that is going to be tried first in this courtroom, Joseph Bearden. Now, I do have to ask you, because we saw a shot before of the two defendants, William Brown, we're just seeing now, and Joseph Bearden, Joseph Bearden on the left here. We just saw, a, just a few moments ago, a shot of him inside of the courtroom, just today, I believe, putting a jacket, or at least within the last couple of days, putting a jacket on with his defense attorney. And it's very apparent that, as you can see right there, uh, significant tattoos above and below his left eye. And on a front shot, you can see also tattoo, you can see it right there, um, on his neck that extends above his collar. What do we know about that? Well, Jack, has become a huge issue with jury selection today. In fact, it's slowing down jury selection a little bit. Uh, yesterday, one of the prospective jurors and General Vordire was a gentleman that has just finished the police academy. He wants to become a police officer. And he was being questioned, and he started saying that they had learned about tattoos in the police academy, and they had learned what they meant. Well, the judge stopped him right then and there. But another juror uh, prospectively told others that a lot of talk was going on about the tattoos and what they meant. So they are 
individually questioning jurors right now as to whether those tattoos have a significance or not. And what was said in open court outside of the presence of the jury is that specifically, and I didn't know this, specifically not equated with this defendant, but in general, when you have teardrop tattoos on your face, that can signify that you have actually killed people. And it's sort of a mark of distinction that you get that tattoo in the formation of a type of teardrop on your face if you have ultimately done that task of killing someone before in your life. Gene, I don't know what those t tattoos mean, but I can tell you I defended a lot of murder cases. And if I had a client who, in between the murder charge, the murder event and trial, came in tattooed, I, you know what, I'm not so sure I wouldn't be saying I, I'm out of this case. Because clearly mm -hmm. it can't possibly help him no matter what those tattoos means. Um, it, it, there is also, and this is an, an interesting trial for a lot of reasons here. Uh, let me just step back for a second. We know what the prosecution says with regard to Joseph Bearden. What does he say about his involvement, if any, in the, the death of Ryan Skipper? This is going to be a fascinating part of this case because, first of all, the prosecutors filed a separate information with three charges on it, accessory after the fact, uh, stolen goods, receiving stolen property, and tampering with evidence. Well, the defense asked for those three charges to be brought into this case, so the information and the indictment were merged. The defense is going to admit that the defendant in this case, yes, that he was involved with, uh, after the fact, doing things, of helping to clean the car, helping to dispose of the car. They're going to admit receiving stolen property. They're going to admit tampering with evidence. But what they're going to say is that he in no way committed the killing or the robbery of Ryan Skipper. Well, Gina, as you said, it will indeed be a fascinating trial. The jury selection moving on may well be that they're getting started with opening statements on Monday. Gene will, of course, be coming to you as soon as they do, as you'll continue our coverage there. Our own Gene Casares, then live from Bartow, Florida. Gene, thank you. We'll see you again on Monday. Thank you. I am sure. Uh, as Gene said, it will be a fascinating trial for a whole lot of reasons.